Okay, here's a micro lesson on how to handle anxiety and stress through reframing. Now, reframing is simply looking at things in a different way, and a reframe doesn't need to be true in any kind of scientific way. All you're trying to do is put the focus in your mind on one area as opposed to another for good result. You'll see how that works through as I work through some examples. Number one, number one reframe is don't think about your problems at the moment. Say to yourself, how much are you going to care about any of this on your deathbed? And how many things from even, say, a year ago that bothered you still bother you today? Just think about the long run. Imagine yourself literally on your deathbed, and what are you thinking at the end of your life? Are you thinking about that little slight you had at the office? Probably not. So why worry about it now? Now, you say to yourself, but Scott, that's easy to say. That's the point. It's just the repeating of it in your mind as if it were true that makes the circuitry in your brain start to uh, take form in a way that will make you think that maybe it doesn't matter. In other words, you can talk yourself into almost anything through repetition. It doesn't, doesn't even have to be something that your rational bra- brain thinks is true. You can still talk yourself into it if it's useful. <clears throat> Number two, forget about removing bad thoughts. Can't be done. You can't subtract thoughts. As soon as you think you can, you get in this loop where you keep trying to subtract them and you just keep thinking about them. Instead, add things to your mental shelf space until your shelf is so full of other stuff that it's just crowding out the other thoughts. You can't subtract a thought. Don't even try. You can only add thoughts, and they can, over time, be more interesting and more provocative and more absorbing, and and then minimize the thing that had been bothering you. Once you've minimized it, it'll take care of itself. Think of uh, social media not so much as that hobby, that thing you like to do in your spare time, Don't think of it as entertainment. Think of it as a vampire that exists to suck the energy and attention out of you for somebody else's financial benefit. Now, is that true? Again, a reframe doesn't have to be technically true. It doesn't have to be the only way to look at it. It just has to be true enough that your brain is willing to, let's say, deal with that thought until it sort of becomes true. And you start thinking, ah, I don't want to have a vampire suck in my energy. I think I'll do something else. The less time you spend on uh, social media, the less anxiety, the less stress you'll have. Control the controllable. Uh, you've heard this before in different forums. There are some things you simply can't control. If you just worry about, well, everything's going to go to heck because there are a whole bunch of things I can't control, you're going to feel stressed and anxious all the time. Instead, you'll find that as a good technique for controlling how you feel, control the hell out of everything you can control. That would include things like your fitness, your diet, your sleep, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So anything in your life that isn't hard-coded, such as the DNA you were born with, control the heck out of it and watch how much better you feel about your life because controlling the controllable always works you're going to get a better result if you do it. Number five, one of my all-time favorites. Do you ever come home from work or you're just feeling anxious or stressed? If you do, tell yourself, hey, that's not stress. That's not anxiety. That's energy. I got too much energy. My heart's beating out of my my chest. My, My pulse is too hard. Too much energy. Use it. Use your energy and match it with a thing that's perfectly suited for a person who has too much energy. Exercise. Whenever you feel stressed, tell yourself, man, I'm going to have a good workout today. Is it the only thing that's true? No. Doesn't matter. Reframes work anyway. Just make it a little bit of a, a loop or a mantra in your head. Every time you feel that stress, say, wow, I could lift a lot today. I've been using this for years works incredibly well. One of the best ones. Criticism. A lot of us get stressed out or anxious that other people are criticizing us, maybe in their heads. Maybe they're thinking bad thoughts about us somewhere. The way to think about that is that criticism is not something that's touching you. It's not on you. It's not 
It's not anywhere near you. It's literally a chemical reaction that's happening in the stranger's skull, and that stranger isn't even in the room, usually. And so, ask yourself, how much should you be bothered by a minuscule chemical reaction on the other side of the planet, or the other side of town, even? Reverse it, if that's not good enough. Ask yourself, how much are other people bothered by a thought you had in your head that you did not share? Not too bothered, are they? Because they don't even know it's there. They might imagine you have a bad thought, but that's different. So, whenever you feel that people are thinking poorly of you, it might be true. We'll get to that in a second. But probably it isn't. Probably they just don't care. And if they did care, it would just be a tiny chemical reaction in the brain of a stranger or just somebody who's not in the room. Learn to like embarrassment, number seven. And that's something you can learn with practice. The Dale Carnegie course goes directly at this. They put you in embarrassing situations in front of your classmates until you realize that they just cheer and say, well, that was a good job dealing with that embarrassing situation. And pretty soon you think, via repetition, even though there's no logic to it, you start thinking, wow, embarrassing situations are kind of fun. Everybody gives me attention. I didn't really get hurt. Everybody talks about me. They have a story about me. Cool. I can't tell you how many insanely embarrassing situations I've been in, both as a public figure and privately. Do any of them bother me at the moment? Nope. (laughs) None. And it's not because I'm awesome. This stuff used to bother me a lot. I just learned through practice to put myself in lots of embarrassing situations, such as the one I'm in right now. Well, what will people say about this video? I don't know. doesn't bother me. won't stop me a bit. Uh, so learn to like embarrassment. Don't just tolerate it. You can actually, literally, get to liking it. I'm already there. It's a real thing. A, B, test everything that you're, you're working on. So whatever you're working on for your stress, your anxiety, don't think that if the first three things you tried didn't give you a result, that you're done. No, no, this is a lifetime process. You're never done. You're never done. And we'll talk about that more, too. Uh, number nine, ego is the enemy. If you're thinking, oh, I don't want to do that because I'll get embarrassed. Oh, if I do that, I might get hurt. You know, you don't want to do things that are too dangerous. But a lot of things you, you don't do because you're timid. That timidness is your ego trying to protect itself. Why are you trying to protect it? Reframe it. It is more accurate to say that your ego is your enemy. It's, it's preventing you from talking to people you'd like to talk to. It's preventing you from asking that person on a date. It's preventing you from making the first move. It's preventing you from going for the next job. Your ego is your worst enemy in the world. Kill that thing. Some people do it with mushrooms. I don't recommend that or any other drug because I'm not a doctor. I'm just giving you some background information. Other people kill their ego by learning to like embarrassment. Other people kill it by being successful enough in something that even if they're terrible at a different thing, well, you're still Tiger Woods, right? Now, maybe that's going a little too far, but if you're good at anything, it will protect you against things you're not good at. So find something you can just do more than other people because that's usually what it takes to be the good one. could be anything. Play tennis, play pool, uh, bird watch, whatever it is. Just do it more than other people. You'll be one of the good ones. And then when you're one of the bad ones at something else, you'll say to yourself, well, somebody else put more time into it because they cared about that more than I cared. If I had put as much time into it as Bob, I'd be just as good as that, at that thing as Bob. And how do I know that for sure? Because when I put time into the thing I liked, I got pretty good at it. So you need some experience at getting good at stuff. And do that even if it's only for mental purposes. Now, here is perhaps the one takeaway that is the most important of all. If there's only one thing you're going to remember, remember this. Stress reduction and anxiety reduction are your full-time job. You're never done. It's the most important thing you need to do because this is the key that opens up the rest of your life. If you don't take care of your your anxiety and stress, all of the other goodness of life will be, let's say, less available to you. And I think you know it. That's why you're watching this, right? So never quit, never stop, 
Never stop pushing. This is a full-time job forever. And the parts of it that you need a system for, and when I say you need a system for it, I'm not trying to sell my book right now, but it just happens to be exactly the content that matches this. Uh, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big uh, has been a big influence on a lot of other books and on business. And it's because it teaches you how to make your own system, not something I'm telling you to do, but how to create a system that works for you individually very easily for all the things that matter to your anxiety and your stress, your sleep, your diet, your fitness. And also I'm going to add your bullshit detection. If you can tell what is a real thing to be afraid of and what is a, a phantom, something that you could have been afraid of, but you know it's bullshit. Learn to have a better bullshit detection uh, system. And that also is in my book, Had to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big. Have a system for acquiring skills. I call it a skill stack. That's also in the book. And it means uh, putting together skills that work well together. It doesn't mean being number one in the world in one thing. It means combining things to make yourself sort of a Joe Rogan, somebody who can do a bunch of things really well, but what makes him special is that the combination just works powerfully. Uh, learn how to network. Have a system for it. It's something you can learn. If it doesn't work the first time, A-B test. Try something else. You should find a system for your social life as well as your business life. In the social life, what I mean by that is find a way that you will always be around new people or the people you like they already know. Could be that you join a sport and you meet the people who do that. Could be you get more involved in the school and you meet the other parents of whatever. But have a system for it. Don't don't just wonder why you don't have friends. Do something. Do a thing that puts you in contact with a lot of people. Join a church. It'll be obvious what to do, but don't not have a system for it because that goes directly to stress reduction and anxiety. You need social. You need people. They help. Get in nature. Science uh, confirms this all the time. And you can test this in five minutes. Take a walk. When, when you're stressed, just get outside, around some trees. See how you feel in five minutes. It's immediate. This is a really big one, and it, it hits you right away. This will take down your stress. And a change of scenery in general. Now, people are different in how much uh, change of scenery they need. I tend to live in my head, so I don't need as much change of scenery as other people. But even I can feel the stress disappear when I'm in a completely new place that's also comfortable. Those are your tips for uh, reducing your anxiety and your stress. It's a full-time job. A, B, test it forever until you've got something that's really working for you. I guarantee this will help. And that is your micro-lesson for the day.